Nicole, also known as Nikki Vegan, and in today's video, we are talking all things motivation. I've got a lot going on in this video. We're gonna be making focaccia. We're gonna be decorating focaccia. We are going to be doing a grocery haul, and we are gonna be talking about all of the different ways in which you can stay motivated to continue being vegan, or maybe even get motivated to start being vegan if you are like veg curious. <laughs> I'm covering so much in this video, including the one thing that you can do that is better for the environment than not showering for six months. Definitely stay tuned for that. I'm really excited about this one, so I hope that you enjoy. Thank you to Thrive Market for teaming up with me on this video, and with all of that said, let's get started. Before we get into motivation and solutions, I think it's first important to identify two things. The first is to remember your why or your intention. What was that initial thing that made you wanna go vegan? What lit that fire and was like, I am going to do something. I'm gonna make that big lifestyle change or I'm gonna start eating more plants. Whatever that initial reason was, maybe it was one or a few things, that is your why, that is your intention. And I think it's very important to have that clear in your mind. But secondly, I think it's very important to be able to name or identify what your roadblocks are because sometimes when you're feeling overwhelmed your brain just feels all cloudy and it just feels heavy and stressful and you just sort of want to push it all aside and quit altogether but I think if you can spend a little bit of time reflecting and thinking about the areas in which veganism is inconvenient or stressful for you or just the areas that you could use a little motivation in specifically it's a lot easier to then find the motivation that will be helpful for you and the solutions that will be helpful for you. So naming the problem is the first step to finding a solution to that problem. If one of your roadblocks is that making vegan food is just not very convenient or practical for you, I think it's important to try to make it as easy as possible. And one of the ways that I make it easy on myself is to always make sure that I have my staples on hand. I actually wrote some of mine down. And with these staples, I can make so many different kinds of meals really quickly, even if I haven't been to the store in a long time or I don't have a lot of time to make a meal. In the legumes and beans category, I always have chickpeas, black beans, and red lentils. In the dried foods category, category I have brown rice and pasta because those make really great bases for any kind of fresh ingredients that you may have. In the nut butter category peanut butter and tahini are definitely my staples. Of course I love other kinds of you know almond butter and chocolate hazelnut butter and cashew butter all of that is really fun but I think that peanut butter is a really great budget friendly staple and tahini is great because I can use it to make sauces I can use both of those ingredients to make smoothies to make oatmeal to make uh, savory salad dressings and soups and all kinds of things so those are my two staples for sure and then in the freezer I like to always have frozen fruit and frozen vegetables on hand because that way I can combine those frozen produce ingredients with whatever you know beans or lentils or pasta that I have in the pantry and always know that there's a easy you know kind of filling meal available even if I haven't been to the store in a while and then in the canned section canned tomatoes canned coconut milk and veggie broth because that will help to kind of tie the whole meal together and I also like to have a couple jars of pasta sauce one of my roadblocks is that I sometimes imagine my life is a lot more organized than it actually is that I have way more time than I actually have or that I just have way more energy than I sometimes do at the end of the day to make a meal and so I imagine myself making you know homemade tomato sauce out of canned or fresh tomatoes and you know fresh ingredients that I always have on hand the fact of the matter is sometimes I just need to make dinner in 10 minutes and having some ready-made ingredients like tomato sauce is something that makes it a lot more practical and doable for my real life so I'm able to get into the kitchen whip up a healthy meal you know have my dried pasta my canned tomatoes maybe I'll do some of the lentils that I have in the pantry some frozen broccoli call it a day it does not need to be super complicated and that way I'm really working with my real life and I'm you know I, I'm stocking up with items that actually really make things convenient for me and not the imaginary world that I wish I lived in in my mind where I had all the time and resources to make every single thing from scratch so I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind when you're identifying your roadblocks be really honest about your situation and the amount of time that you have because that way you can make sure that you have supplies that really will actually be helpful for you and for me having those staples on hand including some pre-made items and frozen items all of that really works with the real life that I actually have and it makes it a lot easier to make vegan meals. 
Next, I'm gonna show you a little grocery haul because I find that whenever I peek into other people's carts when I'm at the grocery store, which I shamelessly do, I get motivated to try new products and to you know try new recipes and stuff like that. So here's a little peek into my grocery cart and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Like I said, I love to stock up on tomato sauce, so I have several jars of these in my pantry at all times. I got olive oil to make focaccia and rolled oats because I make oatmeal almost every single day. I recently did a video for high protein breakfast recipes and this bowl of oatmeal has over 21 grams of protein. But I also like to make gingerbread oats around Christmas time and I use oatmeal to make all kinds of desserts like my peach and raspberry crisp. I also love apple cider vinegar and I get it on Thrive because look how giant this bottle is. It's like the size of my head. I get the big old bottle and I use this to make salad dressings and then I got some sprouted brown lentils. I don't think I've ever made sprouted brown lentils before so I'm excited to try these but I love to make lentils to make my arugula, roasted carrot, and lentil salad. It has miso, sesame, brown rice, and crunchy walnuts. It is definitely my favorite salad and I know that a lot of you guys have recreated this and made it at home and I've gotten really good feedback so that is why I got lentils so that I could make this again because it's definitely one of my favorite recipes right now. I also got a couple cans of diced tomatoes for soups and stews and so that I could make my chili recipe which I will link down below. I got some organic red lentils because I love to make dal and I pretty much make a big pot of this recipe which is also linked down below at least once a month. It's got coconut milk, canned tomatoes, spices. It's so good. Then I got a couple boxes of cereal. I do find that these kind of healthier cereals, the ones that don't have a lot of added ingredients and sugars can be pricey. So I do like to get those on Thrive to save some money. This is one of my favorite high protein pastas. And this is one of my favorite budget friendly ways to add some healthy plant-based protein into a meal. I'll sprinkle it on top of grain bowls or salads. But my favorite way is to add about two tablespoons to the blender when I'm making a smoothie like I did in my blueberry milkshake smoothie recipe which of course is linked below this is packed with protein and it's so creamy and delicious i absolutely love it i got another bag of raisins because when i was a kid i used to hate raisins but now i can literally eat them by the handful i think they're so good and one thing that i love to do is to actually soak them in a vinaigrette before putting it on a salad i find that this is such a great way to kind of totally transform the taste and texture they plump up and become so delicious so definitely give that a try i got a big bag of pine nuts for pesto and then I got some coffee as well on this day. Everything in this haul is from Thrive Market and even though I can buy you know pasta and beans and tomato sauce anywhere I love to shop on Thrive Market because not only do they always have discounted prices but I also save time because I don't have to go into the grocery store and it gets shipped to my house in recyclable packaging carbon neutral packaging from their zero waste warehouses but on top of that I find it really motivating to support a business that is trying to do some good for the environment they recently got a B Corp certification which basically means that they are legally required to consider the impact of their decisions on communities, on suppliers, on customers, on their workers, and on the environment. And they've made a lot of big changes over the years. I've been a customer with them for years, and I've really seen that they have made huge strides and they really do put sustainability first. Everything arrives in recyclable and reusable packaging. So if you guys want to become a member, they now have a one month or a one year option. And if you click the link to join today, you will get 25% off your order and a free gift. Later on in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make homemade focaccia. And my reason for that is because one of my biggest sources of motivation as a vegan is to get excited about recipes and you know trying new things in the kitchen because that really does kind of break up the day to day. I think it's so important to have your staples, but I also think while you're making your meal plan, have the majority of your meal plan be you know those kind of tried and true recipes that are easy and convenient for your real life. But then maybe one day a week or a couple times a month, make sure you also so schedule in new recipes that you're really excited to try. That will give you something to look forward to and that really does work as motivation as well. So for me, learning how to make focaccia from scratch with just some very simple basic ingredients was definitely motivating for me. I've been looking forward to learning how to do this for a while. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that. But first, I think it's very important to mention that one of the best ways to stay motivated is to stay curious. If I could give everybody just one bit of advice besides just make it as 
as easy as possible, it would be to keep learning. And I think that deliberately seeking out information about animal welfare, factory farming, you know, news and policies regarding animal agriculture and the environment, all of that is really, really important to stay on top of because that will keep that fire burning. You probably went vegan initially because you watched a documentary or you read an article or a book or you had a great conversation with someone and you felt really fired up about what they were what they were saying and you were like something needs to be done i think that you can continue to kind of fan those flames inside of you and keep that motivation going if you are continually learning they say knowledge is power i also think knowledge is motivation and it really helps to solidify your why as well with everything else that's going on in the world the issue of climate change can feel larger than life, overwhelming, and even inevitable. And that can really make it hard to stay vegan for the environment. But again, knowledge is power, or in this case, knowledge is a great source of motivation. And one thing that really stuck with me when I was getting my plant-based nutrition certification last year was that around 50% of US rivers are polluted and no longer considered suitable for aquatic life. Yes, half, which is absolutely mind-blowing. Basically, the runoff from animal waste is not treated the way that human waste is, and so all of that manure from factory farming is dumped into our lakes and rivers and oceans, and that's what causes dead zones. And that's basically when excess nitrogen gets into the water, it causes eutrophication, which leads to low levels of oxygen in the water, and that causes an overgrowth of algae blooms that kills aquatic life, and it can harm humans too. So while switching to shorter showers is a noble goal, it's nowhere near as effective as switching to a plant-based diet. In fact, you can save more water by not eating one pound of meat than you can by not showering for six months. Let that sink in. I think it's also important to point out that you don't always have to be seeking out information about you know problematic systems and exploitation and destruction it can also be very motivating just to learn about animals i think the more you know about individual animal species and you know the way that they communicate and and all of that i think that can be really really motivating if you find that your passion for animals is fading a little here are some interesting facts that i learned about pigs MercyForAnimals.org reported that a 2015 study by researchers at Emory University discovered that pigs are smarter than dogs, and they can solve problems just as well as chimpanzees. Thanks to their excellent long-term memories, pigs also tend to be skilled at puzzles and certain video games, pigs love to play and mock fight just like dogs, and they're capable of learning from each other. Pigs have even shown that they feel empathy and can comprehend simple symbolic language. So if you're in need of a motivation boost, I think that learning about animals is a great way to bridge the disconnect that we have in our minds between animals and food. And here's a practical takeaway if you find yourself missing the taste of pig bacon and you're tempted to give up on veganism because of it. Try making my vegan BLT wraps. These are perfect for those of you who have tried vegan bacon and you just weren't a fan of it on its own. I think this recipe is kind of a magical combination that makes the vegan bacon absolutely delicious. And I think it's because you get that crispy, smoky vegan bacon inside of a wrap with some homemade garlic mayo. You get a zesty bite of bright red onion Onion, and then it's all wrapped in a warm toasty tortilla. It only takes a couple of minutes to make and it will definitely satisfy your cravings for smoky, crispy, crunchy, savory bacon, but it doesn't involve any pigs. Another great way to stay motivated is to spend some real time with other animals. In the West, we have you know dogs and cats as pets, and it's really hard for us to think of them as food generally because we know that they each have individual personalities and you know personality quirks, and they're also individual and gentle. And thinking of them as a burger is sickening to most people in the West, uh, where that's not part of our culture. But I think the same is true when you spend time with any animal. I recently went to a farm sanctuary last year before COVID and I spent time with some rescued cows and it was really hard for me to imagine that I used to eat these beautiful gentle animals as burgers and no judgment to my former self or to any of you if you still eat meat but it really was incredible to see that they are just like dogs and cats they each have individual personalities and the same was true for the chickens and when you learn about fish and the the way that they communicate or you know really any animal that we think of as food the more time you spend with them in real time interacting with them the harder it is for you to imagine them being exploited for food when it's so unnecessary when there are so many great vegan options so spending real time with animals I think is a great motivation 
All right, so let's make some focaccia because I've been looking forward to learning how to make focaccia for a long time. The night before, I just took some regular all-purpose flour and some rapid yeast, and I'm following a recipe from Bon Appetit, which I will link down below. It only requires a few ingredients like flour, salt, water, and yeast to make the actual dough, and then focaccia gets the majority of its flavor from that salt, from the yeast, and also from olive oil. So this is definitely a decadent recipe, but it's really easy to make. You're gonna mix all that together, put it in a bowl with some olive oil and it is going to double in size in the refrigerator overnight. So I just tucked it in, said goodnight, and waited until the morning. So it's the next day now. I've just had a little peek at the dough. It is rising. It has doubled in size. Oh my gosh. See how full it is? So, so far so good. So now I'm going to do the second step, which is really simple. I'm just going to take one tablespoon of olive oil and two forks and basically just kind of lift it, fold it into the center, and then I'll turn the bowl a quarter of the way, lift it again, fold it in, and continue a couple of times. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it onto a nine by 13 baking dish and spread it out as best I can in the pan. It's not going to completely stretch out just yet because it's cold. You can go ahead and just preheat your oven, let it sit on top of the oven, and that way that warm environment will help to make sure that it rises and gets really nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna do that, and then it will be time to decorate and pop it in the oven, and I cannot wait. Wait until you see the update. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Oh, it's so fluffy. Next is the fun part. We're gonna do one tablespoon of olive oil on top and then with clean hands, you're just going to poke the dough to give it that dimpled surface that focaccia has, that kind of trademark focaccia top. And this is going to deflate the dough and will help it to bake evenly. Then you can just put a little bit of salt on top and throw it into the oven or you could do fresh rosemary is really good. But I wanted to take it up a, another level, if you will, and just decorate it like a gardenscape. I thought it would be not only a fun recipe to try, but also a nice activity because cooking after all, is a means to an end, but it can also be a creative outlet and something that is an enjoyable kind of way to spend an afternoon too. So I took a couple minutes to decorate the top with some fresh herbs and some peppers to make kind of like a flower garden. My friend Laura has made a couple of these gardenscapes and she told me that it's a really good idea to dip the greens in salt water before you put them onto the focaccia and that will prevent them from burning. So I used that to make the stems and the leaves. I used the bell peppers to make or actually they're the mini peppers. I don't know if those are called bell peppers, but you know those little mini sweet bell peppers that you can get? I sliced those into rings and I used them to make the flowers and also the sun up in the corner. And then I used olives on the bottom to make some, you know, dirt, gravel, soil, whatever you wanna call it. The finishing touch is some sea salt flakes. The recipe calls for just a little sprinkle of sea salt flakes on top. I get mine on Thrive, but you can find these at most grocery stores. I also went ahead and put a little bit of everything but the bagel on the bottom part as like part of where the soil and gravel was. And then this went into the oven. And at this point I was so relaxed and calm just because I was, you know, doing something with my hands. But the best part was how incredible this made my kitchen smell while it was baking. Now I don't think you can really tell from the video how absolutely massive this is it's so tall so fluffy it made so much bread and because it's so thick and tall you can definitely go ahead and slice it and use it to make sandwiches and I ended up freezing quite a bit of this and I am going to be eating focaccia for a long time to come because it made a lot but I don't mind because this was so good it was crispy and crunchy on the outside it had the perfect amount of flavor it's really just that simple olive oil and sea salt that is so good with bread and then the inside was so fluffy so soft I just wanted to be sitting in a garden with a glass of wine. It was great. The last thing I will say is something that is very easy to overlook and I myself overlooked it. It was actually something that my boyfriend pointed out to me and once he said it, I immediately realized that this was hugely motivating to me, especially in the beginning. And that is to find a vegan community. I hear so many times from you guys and when I was on the vegan view that it is really hard to find vegan friends and I know exactly what you mean because when I first went vegan, I was the only vegan that I knew. I had one friend who lived in Norway who was vegan, but in my everyday life, 
I didn't know any other vegans and I didn't have vegan friends. I didn't have a vegan community, but I did see a vegan community online and they were making these what I eat in a day videos and I knew that there were other vegans out there. And so eventually over time I started, you know, connecting with other vegans online. And when I moved back to California, I went on meetup.com and I started attending, you know, potlucks and picnics and different, you know, daytime outdoor meetup basically where all the vegans in the community would come hang out and get to know each other and we could talk about hey where do you get this or have you tried this new vegan product or what do you say when your family members you know don't get it or whatever and I know that because of COVID that's a lot harder to do nowadays but and just in general it's hard to put yourself out there like that it was for me back then too but it is definitely still possible there are lots of facebook groups and online communities that you can interact with you can ask questions you can bounce ideas off of i will link some in the description box below but i think that it's really important just to find your community whether it's in person or online because that support is so important and while we're talking about community i also think it's important to mention that you can really curate a vegan community on your social media so if you're scrolling through Instagram and constantly seeing people hunting and fishing or preparing animal products and you're not seeing a lot of vegans on your page, that might make you feel even more isolated and not supported. So I think it's really important to make sure that you are actively following people who inspire you and who make veganism look fun and practical and easy and it makes you feel like, hey, I can live a healthy, happy vegan life too. I think that seeing that is actually a lot more important than we might realize. So go through your Instagram feed, check out who you're following on YouTube and make sure that you have some really positive role models that make you understand that you are not alone because support is very, very important. I would love to know which one of these strategies or tips was the most helpful for you. So let me know in the comments. And I also want to know what makes you feel motivated to stay vegan or what do you tell people when they're like, oh, I'm not feeling motivated. What should I do? Chime in in the comments. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Again, there is a link to try Thrive in the description box below and you will get 25% off your order and a free gift when you join today. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you very soon. Bye.